Hey friends, today I'm going to be showing you how to create an IAM user. Now firstly, before we get started, what is an IAM user and why are we actually setting one up? Well, in AWS, a user is a person or a computer that can do certain things on your account. Now, when you create an AWS account for the first time, you're actually logged in as a root user. And AWS recommends that you don't use your root user for everyday tasks, as this is often going to lead to security breaches. Instead, you should create IAM users. IAM users have separate usernames and passwords compared to your root account. And their most useful function is that they can actually limit access to certain resources within your AWS account. For example, if you had a new intern starting, you wouldn't want them to have access to your entire AWS account because then they could just break everything in production. Let's say instead you only wanted them to have access to one service or maybe things in the development environment. You would want to set up an AWS IAM account with the least amount of privileges possible so that they don't get anything they shouldn't have access to. So I'm going to show you how to create an IAM user. And then I'm also going to give you a project at the end that you can add to your resume to stand out. So let's get straight into the tutorial now. So I'm going to assume that you have an AWS account and you're logged in already. And that is in your root user. So now what we're going to do is go up to the top here and we're going to search up IAM and then we're just going to click into it. Awesome. Then we're going to go to the left hand side and we're going to click users. Then once that loads up, we'll go to create user on the right here and we'll start creating our IAM user. So first we need to create a username. I'm just going to type in my name. I'm going to add a dash IAM user. And this can be anything. It can be literally anything you want. And we're actually going to click this provide user access to the AWS management console. If we don't click this, it means that we're giving our user only programmatic access. So that means our user would only be able to interact with AWS services through a command line or an SDK rather than actually on the console like we're doing now. Programmatic scripts are typically used for automation services, backend, CICDs. For example, imagine you're managing a website that needs automatic access to shut down servers during a busy period or spin up more instances during a Black Friday sale. Programmatic access means that a Python script could do this automatically using programmatic access. So there's no human clicking required. Anyway, what we're going to do is click into here and go provide user access. And then we're going to click I want to create an IAM user. Now in here, we're just going to choose a custom password, but it is best practice to choose an auto-generated password. Uh, so I'm just going to add in a password here. Here's another useful thing to do. For security reasons, having users create a new password at the next sign-in is usually recommended, but for this case, we're just going to turn it off just for this example. Then we're going to go to the bottom and click next. Now here, you'll see there is different permission options. So the first one here is add a user to the group. Now, what is a IAM user group? And I would think of a user group kind of like a collection or a folder of IAM users. What it does is it allows you to manage all of the permissions for all of your users within a group by attaching policies to that group instead of attaching them individually to the users within that group. This is typically a great way to manage groups of people that have similar kind of requirements in terms of their access. You can also copy other permissions that you have set up but what we're going to use is attach a policy directly. Now, I would think if a policy as the rules for who can do what within your AWS resources. So it's about giving permissions to IAM users, groups or roles, saying what or what they can't do within certain resources. And it also decides when those rules kick in. Now, since there's over 200 different services within AWS, there is thousands of different policies. So for example, if you give administrator access to IAM user here, this is what their policy is going to look like. So the, the version here is the date of the latest policy version. And that tells you, if the policy is up to date with standards or best practices, then you have a statement and inside the statement is an effect. Now effect can either have two values, deny or allow. And this is to indicate whether a policy denies or accepts a certain action. And then action is a list of actions that a policy allows or denies. So in this case, action star means it allows all actions because a star means everything. And then lastly, you have a resource, which is talking about which resource does this policy apply to. And again, we have a star, which means you get control for everything. So for this admin access, this provides full access to AWS services and resources. But we don't want that for an intern, so we're just gonna give them S3 access. So what we're gonna do is search up S3, and we want them to have full access of S3. But as you can see, with just S3 alone, there are so many different types of policies that we could attach. Some are for read-only, some are for tables full access, but we're just gonna give our intern full access completely. So we're gonna click into here, and here you can see the JSON policy. So we can see the version date, we can see the effect is allow. And then here we can see our actions in here. So this is basically saying all actions that you could possibly take on an S3 bucket and an S3 object in Lambda are allowed, which is awesome. And then once again, all resources within S3 and S3 object Lambda are allowed. So what we're going to do is just tick that box here and then scroll down. We're actually going to skip set permissions boundary. We're going to cover this in a later video and we're just going to hit next. 
Awesome, so now you can review your details here, but we're just gonna create our user. Now this is super important here as these are your, basically your sign in instructions for your IAM user. So make sure you download this as a CSV file or you email the instructions. Uh, just make sure that you have this somewhere handy. So now these are our details here. What we're gonna do is copy the console sign in URL link and then we're gonna create a new tab here. Cool, then we're gonna type in our username and password. Now it should automatically fill out your account ID or your alias. I've created an alias, which we can show you in another video. Next, just type in your username. So mine was user and then type in your password and then sign in. Cool, so now we're actually in the console and you can see in the top right corner here, it says Maximus IAM user. So we know that we're actually signed in as an IAM user now. Now we need to check a couple of things. We actually gave ourselves access to S3. So let's just check another service to see what we actually have access to. So I'm gonna type in EC2 at the top and I'm just gonna click in here. Cool, so now that I'm actually in EC2, I can click in launch instance and let's have a look at what we see. Now you can see here that there is a lot of errors on this dashboard here. And you can see here in this error, it's basically saying that my IAM user is not authorized to perform any of the free tier usage on this resource. Um, so if I tried to create an instance here, it says you are not authorized to perform this operation. And it actually shows you the policies that you would need to be able to have access. So what I'm gonna do, is actually go back to S3 now. And that's the one that we have given ourselves policies for. So as you can see in here, there's actually no red showing up because we do have access to create a bucket. I can go through this, I can create an S3 bucket, I can delete buckets, I can basically do anything because I have access to all resources within S3. Now, that was a really simple explanation, but I'd actually recommend this hands-on project that you can add to your resume. It's gonna go into a lot more detail in terms of IAM policies, users and user groups. And it's actually something that will show real life skills that you can add to your resume and show to recruiters. And it's gonna help you stand out a lot. I'll put the link in the description down below for this project. And as always, let me know in the comments if you wanna see anything else and make sure to subscribe to learn something new.